Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about streams in Java. Before I go any further, I just wanted to clarify that when I say stream, I am not talking about the input output stream, but I'm talking about stream as a concept in general. This is a, a slightly newer concept which was introduced in Java 8 and has been there and it is extremely popular and the reason Java introduced this the concept of streams to uh, to the JDK was to promote the functional programming paradigm. What we have been seeing so far is basically an object oriented paradigm where you execute one line at a time but functional programming provides you more optimized way to run multiple lines of code with a, as a sequence of functions in a single line. So the same lines of code which you would write in Java in, an, in a classic object oriented way in like let's say 10 lines, the same line of code, the whole 10 lines of code can be written in a single line using the functional programming paradigm. So let's understand the concept of streams first. So the basic concept of streams is to help you iterating and manipulating collections. So remember all the classes which we covered in the collections framework, the list, the set, the map, etc. Streams provide you with a better and optimized way to basically allow you to manipulate those collections, iterate over those collections, change the representation of the collection types, etc. So to understand why we need streams, let's understand what is how the streaming works. So let, let's take a very simple example. If you if you watch a YouTube video, it is basically streamed to your device. And when we say stream, it means the whole object, the whole video size is not downloaded at once on your device and it is being downloaded bit by bit to your device, piece by piece to your device. This is better in a lot of ways. Your device does not need the full memory to store the complete video because it is only going to process one byte at a time and just throw it away once it has been watched. So the streaming will basically uh, help you work on a very large size item in a where using a very small memory footprint that's the power of streams contrary to that you can also let's say if you are if you're watching a one gigabytes video then you can either download the whole one gigabyte video on your mobile which is going to consume complete one gigabyte space on your memory or you can stream that one gigabyte video onto your mobile device where maybe only a few megabytes will be required to watch the whole video because at a time it will only consume few megabytes and it does not need one gigabyte of complete space to stream that video. So that's the basic idea and that's why streams are very popular and very optimal way to work with collections. And let's understand with the help of an example. Actually, I've prepared multiple examples of multiple capabilities of the streams API. So streams is basically an API which is provided after Java 8 and you can use that to iterate over collections or manipulate collections. Let's see that and let's also compare that with how you have been doing this before Java 8. So here I have created a list. You can see it's basically an integer list and I have created an array list here. I have added few numbers to this particular array list. So numbers are 10, 20, 30 and 40. So precisely four elements are inserted into the list. Now you have a requirement in your project that you need to basically calculate the square of each of the elements of the list and prepare a new list. That is the requirement. So if you were not using streams, you would write code something like this. You will initialize the list, a new list basically, which will which you can call it as anything. For example, you can call it as squares list. And then you are going to call an enhanced for loop here, iterating over the numbers list one by one, taking each element, calculating the square of it, and then adding that element to the new list. And that's how you're going to write this logic if you were not using streams. So you can see it's basically technically one, two, three, four lines of code just to get the list. If you were using streams, then you can do this with a single line. Let me just comment out the old, old code and let me just bring this to the same line to show you that it's a single line code. So the same logic which you wrote here can be written just like this. You can see it's so optimal, so simple for the processor to compile. This code is also very fast because they can process a single instruction very fast and very quickly and streams do utilize the multi-core capabilities as well. So now is the time and the, and the era of multi-core processors and that's why streams are more beneficial to use rather than writing the verbose instructions. So let's understand how this works. 
to convert a particular collection into a stream you need to call the collection type dot stream so here the numbers list was the collection variable so once you call this dot stream you will get a stream representation now the elements of the list are being streamed one by one they are not being sent at all at once they are streamed one by one now so you get a stream the moment you call stream then now the stream api has multiple methods uh, utility methods which you can read about for example if i just write a dot here you will see lots of utility methods which the stream api provides you which you can use in different conditions we are going to cover few of the very important and very popular methods but again please do read out the streams api documentation to get the hang of all the other methods so once we have the stream then the first method which i'm going to showcase to you out of the stream api is the map method map method can be used to change the representation of the elements one by one and that's what we need to do right we need to change the representation of these elements to the square of these elements so remember that uh, that uh, line which i said whenever you have to change the representation of the elements inside the collection think of map think of the map method this is not the map collection this is not the map collection this is the map method of the stream api so if you're using stream api you have a use case to convert the representation of the uh, elements of the collection think about maps always so i call the map method here and then you see the strange syntax here this is basically a lambda function syntax so lambda function is another concept which java introduced in java 8 uh, lambda is as a concept has been there in, in some other programming languages like scala for a very long time but it's been introduced in java uh, of late in java 8 only and lambda is basically uh, you can say is the paradigm which will enable you to write functional programming constructs in java and the syntax of lambda is very straightforward you provide a representation of the element here so each element here one by one is going to be represented to x then you write this arrow here basically a hyphen and a uh, greater than sign and after that you write what is the final value which you want to see for that particular element so here my requirement was that i want to convert the representation of the element to the square of its element so i just do x into x because x is the current element i want to change this to this so whatever destination representation you have in your mind write that on the right hand side of this arrow on the left hand side it will be the element on the right hand side it would be the representation which you want to work with so you have written your conversion logic inside the map method with a lambda function representation under the hood if you want to know more technical details about it it's basically work, working on the concept of functional interfaces do read about the functional interfaces concept as well that will help you build the uh, the usage of lambda functions and how this whole construct is written so read about functional interfaces and lambda functions to understand map in detail and uh, but but for to to work with it like, like i said this the left hand side will be the element and the right hand side would be the uh, final representation which you want to have for that particular element once you have done that still this uh, till this particular point you have converted the collection into the stream it is streaming the elements one by one and you have successfully also calculated calculated the square of each element but this is still a stream now you need to convert the stream back to a list which can be used further in your program so to do that you can use the collect method which we also call as the terminal methods this is another uh, uh, concept which i'm just introducing to you right now so there is an intermediate method concept and there is a terminal method concept this is what streams understand java stream understands when you say intermediate method those methods are or those operators are basically the ones which are used before the final collection is prepared like the map method is basically a intermediate operation and then you have some uh, terminal operations like collect once you call the terminal operations after that the stream has been concluded the stream is dead so once you call this collect method and if you try to do something here again let's say if you want to do something it will not work because the moment you use the collect method stream will expect this to be the last method which you want to use in this particular instruction after that the stream is dead and you will get strange exceptions if you try to write any further operation after collect so do you, so also do read about what are the all the different terminal operations available and what are all the intermediate operations available i'm going to cover a bunch of these in this in the different examples i have prepared in this particular class but I'm, uh, because 
Uh, I will not be able to cover all of the methods. So do read about those methods. What are the intermediate operations and what are the terminal operations? And the concept I just explained to you, intermediate operations can be used uh, in, in, a, in a chaining fashion after this dot map. You can use another dot map, another dot map, another dot map. You can again try, like do this. This will, this will work fine. You can keep concatenating multiple map methods and multiple filter methods and any of the other intermediate operations which are available. But once you have called the collect method, after this, you cannot call another map. If you try to do this, it is going to fail. It will not work because collect is a terminal operation. And what I want to do in the terminal operation is I want to convert this new stream, which is having the square of the elements, convert that back into a new list. And to do that, I can call the collectors dot to list method. The moment you uh, write this method inside the collect method, it is going to take the stream of the elements one by one, just collate that stream into a single stream, uh, into a single collection, and then return that collection back into the list which you want to store it in. So remember the collect method, terminal operation, and the moment you, you do collectors.to list, the whole streams elements is going to be uh, converted into a list, and that list is going to be stored into whatever uh, left hand variable you have written. And that is how you can basically write this whole code, which we wrote in four lines into just a one line, and then you can print the squares list. So let's do that. Let me comment this particular code as well so that we don't get any strange uh, errors or strange outputs. Let me comment this part as well. We will cover these one by one and let me cover all of this as well. I'm just going to comment everything here and we'll focus on only the squared list which we have prepared using the streams API. So right click run as Java application. There you go. You have the output here. So the first number was 10. The square of it is 100. So yes, you get 100. Second number is 20. The square of it is 400. Third number is 30. The square of it is 900. The fourth number is 40. The square of it is 1600. So you get all the values squared by using the stream API. And like I said, you can write the same code in the old way as well, but this is the efficient and the better way of writing the same code in a single line. This is all I wanted to cover in today's session. I don't want to make this session very long, but we have a lot coming in in the, in the stream space. So that's what we are going to cover in the future sessions. In the next session, I'm going to talk about another interesting utility method of this particular class, which is around filters and sets. So do tune in and we'll, that's what we are going to discuss in the next session. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please do not forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.